Hello everyone, today we'll see how to work with APIs and JSON using Go. This tutorial is for people who already know the Go syntax and would like to dive deeper into the advanced libraries of Go. I will explain every function we use, so this is a totally beginner-friendly tutorial. For the record, I have created this Notion page in GitHub repository where you can find detailed explanation and more examples. So we just start with analyzing the project. I called it weather app. You can call it whatever you want. For this project, we'll get the API from open weather map. You need to create an account in order to get an API key. So I already have one. I won't create a new one. Now, after you create an account, let's go back to our code editor and declare our two first variables, which are the API URL and the key. It's always a good practice to not put this kind of information in your code. This is why we're going to use a .env file to store those values and use another package that will import those values in there. We will do this step later on. So now this is the base URL. You can paste it in here and add also your API key. Now to get the data from the API, we'll use the get function from the net HTTP package. The function returns a response and an error. Let's write this code that will handle the error if it's not null. And for the response, we need to check its status code. If it's equal to OK, then we can start working with it. Response has the following fields, response status and body. This is from the notions page I've created. The link is in the description. Another good practice is to defer the response body close to prevent memory leaks. When you defer something, it means that this line of code will get executed when the main function finishes. Okay, so for this application, we can just use the base URL. We also need our API key and set a specific city. There is no such further as whether in the word, this is why the city should be included into our URL. And so our search URL should be the base URL plus the API key plus the desired city. And let's get the city from the user input. Now let's change it here to search URL. To read the response, we use the read all function, which gets a response body and returns the data in bytes plus an error. I will ignore the error for now, but we should handle it the same way we did above. Let's see what those bytes look like. I will print them as a string. Let's run the program. Here I'll type London, for example. And this is all the data that was fetched from the API. Now that we've seen how to fetch the data from the API, let's go back to fetch the values from the .env file. First, we have to import this module. You'll find its link in the description. According to its documentation, we will load the content using the go.env.load. Handle the error as usual. In this example, the S3 bucket and secret key is pretty similar to our case.
and then change the declaration of our two variables let's try our program again cool so now it will be more useful to have the data in a more structured way this is why we will be using another important function in this packet, which is the unmarshal function. The function uses the data in bytes and stores it in this field. So let's put the weather bytes and create a weather variable, which is where we'll store the desired data. The weather variable should now look like this. Let's call the struct myJSON. So if you look at the fields here, and if you know it, the JSON data is formatted into key value pairs. So if we want to get a particular value, we have to pass its particular key. Let's retrieve some simple data. For example, if you want to know about the visibility, we have to use that key. So in the struct, let's have a field named visibility, which is an integer, and we'll tell it that in our JSON data, look for a key named visibility. This is how you should write it. Let's look for another info, like name for example, again using the same syntax. Now let's see how the data from the API looks like. This is printf, not as printf. You see, now our data has a better shape. So as a final step, let's have a nice formatted message with more relevant information. As you can see, the keys I have used previously are kind of straightforward to use. But if you take a look at the weather key, its type is a slice. So retrieving information like description could be a little more complicated. Let's follow the same logic. The key is weather, so let's type weather. Then it's type. It's a slice of struct. And add the JSON syntax. Inside that key, let's mention another key, which is description and has type string. Now for the temperature, same thing, the parent key, I don't know if we can call it like that, but the parent key is main. Its type is a struct, and inside we have the temperature and also the humidity. Let's format our output message, so we add the city, then the description, which is a field in the slice of weather. Then the temperature and the humidity, which are fields from Maine. So this is something totally optional, but the weather here it's in Kelvin and I prefer it in Celsius. So the formula is to retrieve 273.15. Everything looks good. Let's now run it again. 
If we want to get rid of all those decimals, we can format it this way. See, now we have a nice output. Let's try this in another city, Tunis for example. Today in Tunis is much hotter than London. Let's try it in another city, Paris. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a useful video. Feel free to comment and share and goodbye.